I've got two words for you this week. Polar vortex. <coughs> sorry, sorry, you're right. February 2015 was pretty bad. Like, we only got above freezing for a couple of hours pretty bad. But after last Thanksgiving's bitter cold temperatures, the phrase has kind of popped up again. So let's get a little refresher on what the polar vortex is on this week's Heather's Weather Wise. The polar vortex is always present, even though we only feel those bitter cold snaps every now and again. Even though we get the cold down here at the surface, the actual center of the polar vortex lives about seven miles up above our heads, right at the tropopause level of the atmosphere. Now, as the name polar vortex would suggest, it normally hangs out at the poles. The vortex part of the name just refers to the winds moving around it. In the northern hemisphere, those cyclonic winds move counterclockwise. In the southern hemisphere, they would move clockwise. In a typical weather pattern, those winds are strong enough to act like a barrier. The momentum from the winds swirling around helps keep that harsh Arctic air up in the Arctic. Think about a spinning top. If it's moving quickly, you can tap the top of it and it doesn't wobble much because the top has momentum. But when it's moving more slowly, it wobbles. When winds around the polar vortex move slower, the polar vortex wobbles. Those wobbles send Arctic air to the lower latitudes in winter. But what makes those winds weaken? That's at the core of why we can break into some serious Arctic patterns. Of course, that also means it's pretty complicated. Let's start off by talking about what makes those winds strong to begin with. And when I say strong, I mean like 150 to 200 miles per hour. Winds around the polar vortex are always moving. That's because of a combination of the Earth's rotation and something called the Coriolis force. Now those winds are moving year round no matter what, but they're at their strongest during the winter. That's because the North Pole is tilted away from the sun, meaning we get more direct sunlight farther to the south and less direct sunlight farther to the north. That creates a big temperature difference, or at least bigger than what there would be in the summer. That temperature difference drives a pressure difference. That pressure difference is what drives the wind. Now to the part where the winds get weaker. That happens, of course, when the temperature difference is a little bit less significant. How do we get that? Well, one way has been happening a little bit more frequently in the last few years, and it has to do with the Arctic sea ice, specifically with there being less Arctic sea ice. And yes, that can be tied to climate change. This year, sea ice is running lower than normal, but we're in better shape than we were in 2012. There's another phenomenon called sudden stratospheric warming. As the name kind of suggests, that means a layer of the atmosphere right around the stratosphere, about 10 to 15 miles above our heads, suddenly gets much warmer than normal. When that happens, the polar vortex is not only disrupted and moved to the south, it can stay that way for weeks. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of Heather's Weather Wise. Thanks for joining me exploring the polar vortex once again. Remember, if you ever have a weather question you would like answered, you can get them to me on any of my social media pages, and I'll do my best to answer them in the coming Wednesdays. I'll see you next week, but until then, remember, it's good to be a geek.